Hello, this is a uh, description of a prop assembly for an old-time rubber model. Um, I have in my hand here the prop assembly that I made for my Smith 1941 Mulva Hill winner, which is an old-time rubber plane, probably, uh, well, it was built in, and designed in 1941 for the Mulva Hill tournament, which is the oldest free flight uh, event in the United States recently won at the 100th anniversary of the contest by no other than Hope Finn. Um, she did a terrific job. Anyway, these old-time rubber airplanes were uh, equipped with folding props probably starting somewhere in the 1930s. And the concept is rather than having a prop that uh, is a fixed two-bladed prop, what happens with a folding prop is that after the rubber has run out of turns, or most of its turns, uh, the prop folds against the fuselage, and this greatly reduces drag during the glide portion of the flight. Now, let me explain a few uh, parts of this prop assembly here. There's nothing really new here. This has all been around for decades. I uh, bought the basic folding prop from Valari Products. Uh, George Bredefoff used to have uh, superior props that he uh, made prop blanks and uh, parts for old-time rubber props including bushings, etc. prop shafts. Uh, I think his father was doing that for him in a machine shop. Um, he also sells the hinges. So this one was mostly done. I could have done it myself but uh, George saved me a lot of work, so I had to do a lot of sanding on the blades, but uh, let me explain here. You have a prop hub, which is basically a very hard piece of, of wood, and uh, on the rear side are sheet metal hinges, and there are pins, etc., that are uh, attached these blades um, to those hinges, and to the hub, that is, and uh, that's the folding mechanism, as you can see. It's all set up to have the right pitch to diameter ratio, which I'm guessing is probably about 1.4 to 1 in this case. Now, this has a 16 inch um, diameter when fully expanded the prop. It's going to be a lot of uh, thrust generated by this. Uh, I built the model, I haven't flown it yet. Uh, I'm still reading up the radio control dethermalizer and I'm hoping to put in a GPS locator because it's a big airplane. The Smith Mulva Hill is basically a um, overgrown collie walk. Uh, the rumor is that Mr. Smith uh, went to uh, uh, Mr. Simmers and asked if he could uh, uh, build an oversized version for the Mulva Hill event and I guess Wally Simmers gave him permission and the rest is history. A um, couple of things I want to point out here. You'll see that there is a coil spring here which is compressed and when the uh, prop hook is pulled back under the tension of the rubber motor the end of that prop hook clears that Phillips screw which is screwed into a hard piece of wood on the back side of the nose block and as the turns diminish maybe you get down to 30, 40, 60 turns um, the spring on the shaft pulls the prop hook forward and it eventually engages the back of this stop screw there you can see it and uh, actually it would engage it on this side and at that point the blades fold and they fold against the sides of the fuselage by reason of the location of this screw compared to the prop hook a prop shaft hook uh, you'll probably see that I have some rubber bands that extend between hooks, a hook on one side of the back side of a blade over the hinge sleeve and to another hook here on the side of the hub. The same is true on the other blade. And what those do is, is sometimes the oncoming wind is not enough or breeze or flow of air is not enough to fully uh, pull the blades against the side of the fuselage and if one blade dangles like this it's going to uh, not only greatly impair the glide but it'll also impair the glide path so it may glide to some place you don't want it to glide your airplane 
let me point out another thing too is I have a drive dog here and that is basically a tube which is secured by a set screw at a predetermined location on the shaft to uh, make sure that all this uh, prop folding action happens when it's supposed to and the outside of that dog fits into a sleeve I can pull it all the way out for you there maybe you can see that and that fits into a sleeve on the uh, hub of the prop so the motor is pretty big you can imagine this is uh, <clears throat> this is the motor I'm going to use um, uh, sizing the rubber motor is, is a science all to itself um, this is uh, approximately 61 grams and it's braided and it's uh, 10 strands of one quarter rubber motor which is equivalent to 20 strands of one eighth you'll see that I have a very large <clears throat> um, well I call it a retainer or a hook it's not really a hook but it has a screw-on cap here so this can fit onto the it can hold all those strands which are quite wide and this can fit onto the prop shaft and everything will still work Back here I have a, a wobbly motor peg, they call it. This is from, it's a 3D printed wobbly motor peg from Bellari uh, Products. Uh, it helps you insert the uh, motor peg through the rubber motor. Uh, on smaller models at least, this will rock back and forth and assist in the uh, unwinding of the rubber motor. Now I've rated this rubber motor just for convenience. Um, um, because it has a spring tensioner, um, and that stop mechanism on it, it's always going to stop with some turns remaining and there'll never be uh, motor bunching, that is clumping of the rubber motor at one end of the fuselage which would upset the CG and cause either a doll or stall or a dive. Um, when, you have a spring when you don't have a spring tensioner, you like to braid motors because if done correctly, you can have a rubber motor that's many times the length of the prop shaft hook to uh, rear peg distance and it'll still uh, work uh, without bunching. The turns will distribute themselves or the rubber motor when it's slack. Uh, it'll sort of grapevine and that'll prevent the CG bunching or the rubber motor bunching and CD, CG shifting. Sorry about that. Um, so that's pretty much all I had for this explanation. Um, if you want to build a uh, folding prop assembly for an old time rubber model, uh, Josh Finn has a, a one-hour tutorial on YouTube how to do that. He doesn't use the old-fashioned uh, block for a uh, for the hub. Uh, instead of this block, he uh, has a a, a a metal wire uh, assembly which is made from uh, one sixteenth music wire and bent to precise angles. Um, that's very popular after about 1955 and particularly in the F1G, uh, vintage F1G propellers that were apparent from all oh, the 50s to the 60s and the early 70s. Um, I'm not very good at soldering, so uh, I prefer this style instead of, of making the, um, the prop assembly for a uh, folding prop out of music wire. I hope you find this uh, tutorial helpful. Oh, one last thing I was going to point out. When I wind this up to maybe 60 inch ounces of torque, uh, I'm going to use a tiny screwdriver to put through the uh, this thing here, and the tiny screwdriver will have a handle, and I'll be able to handle that and hopefully get this onto the uh, to the prop hook. It'll be a little bit like a wrestling an alligator because of all the torque. Let's see if I can do it here. Well, yeah, that's easy. No problem with this when it's not tightly wound. There you have it. Problem becomes now I've got this propeller with this huge amount of torque on it. What? And I've got to take the airplane off of the winding stooge and get it out to the flying field without some disaster occurring. So what I've done here, and this again is an old idea, it's not mine, drilled a hole into the nose block and I, I bushed it with uh, 332nd uh, brass tubing. 
and I'll take this at the field. I'll put a red, I'll put a red ribbon on that so I won't lose it when it falls. But that pin will be inserted here, and that way the prop will be um, held in this position by that pin, and I can get the. Uh, I have my hands free so I can pull the airplane out of the stooge and uh, walk out to the flying field. This will have a red ribbon on it so when I drop it into the grass or the dirt I can find it and uh, pull that out. Hold this with your fingers. You're, you're ready to take off. Of course when the blades spin at high velocity they're going to overcome the force of the reprimands and the blades will stay out here. An important thing to note here is that the blades are kept in their outermost position here. Um, in the prop assembly with the um, wire uh, arrangement instead of this hub, you have to put stops on it, otherwise the blades might tend to go forward slightly, which you don't want. That's going to decrease efficiency, etc. In our uh, RC models, the props spin so fast, for example, on E36, well, that's a free flight model that you don't have to worry about that. They stay, um, the, the radial axis of the blade stays exactly perpendicular to the prop shaft. So that's all for this video, and I hopefully captured it all on screen.